I mean, has anybody else noticed that, look, when you, when you look at the blueprint for a chair, it says sit on it? Does that mean we can sit on it? I know that we can't when it's built, but is this, is this an Easter egg? It's not even Easter yet. A Christmas egg. A Christmas present. Is this a Christmas present? I don't know. How's it going, guys and girls? Welcome to the channel. My name is Callum X. I'm going to very quickly go through everything that is included in the public test patch. That's for the Xbox Insider app and also for Steam beta, so Steam Early Access betas. This is everything that is included in 0.5.0. There's a lot in it, guys. There's a lot in it, so let's get straight into it. So, firstly, the pond and a pond lab have been revamped with additional puzzles, gameplay, and secrets to discover. I've been down there. There's a few bits and bobs down there. I'm not going to give anything away too much at the moment, but there's a bit more to do down there, and it all looks a bit different, so you can go check that out. There's also new underwater caves to find and explore, as well as pond lab outposts. New resources, algae and mussel sprouts. Not going to lie, we had to go earlier on. We couldn't find any mussel sprouts yet, so let me know in the comments if you find where they were. New scabs to collect as well, or scabies, or however you want to call them down, obviously, in the pond lab. Now, there's new crafting content. You've got Fin Flops Plus, which is a plus uh diving lantern plus as well which again that thing just doesn't last long enough so a diving lantern plus is perfect all smoothies also now have a plus version to unlock which as i mentioned on stream i think things like the workers comp smoothie are gonna really 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 benefit from that because they just don't last long enough for anyone who is russian polish korean chinese or speaks brazilian portuguese the localization has been added for you for language translations so big shout out there Xbox and Windows Store save system has been revamped. Now, I know this is one that's put so many players off of playing this game, and I really, really do hope that anyone who plays on Xbox can let me know in the comments as to how well this is working for you. The save system for Xbox and Windows Store platforms has been refactored completely to be more robust and lightweight. The new saves going forward should be more reliable when it comes to saving player data and properly uploading it to the cloud. The game will no longer need to do that long cloud sync each time you boot it, so hopefully no more 40-minute wait times for you on Xbox. Trying to get in the game and sync it between consoles should also be more reliable. Now, it's worth noting this will require one-time save conversion step after logging in just to convert any older saves to the new system. So the first time, you know, don't, don't be afraid and don't think, oh, it's not working because it takes a long time to boot up that first time. After that first time, should be fine. Again, let me know in the comments. Let me know how it's working for you guys. So as far as new features are concerned, all platforms get spear weapons, which can be thrown in the water. So what I mean by that is you can now swim underwater and throw a spear. Now, I'm kind of... I, I don't really know what I think of this, but uh, I mean, it's effective. There's no doubt in that, uh, no matter how realistic it is. Uh, as far as changes in tuning the movement, the player can now jump out of the water at any location instead of just at the edges. So you can just, you know, if you're swimming at the surface of the water, you press jump, up you go. Combat-wise, the koi fish can now eat you. Yes, the koi fish will now eat you. It'll also eat other creatures as well, but it, it can eat you. So just remember that when you're swimming near it, you might get gobbled up, become Pinocchio. Two-handed weapons can now deal more, slightly more damage. So things like the mint mallet is going to do slightly more damage, getting a bit of a boost again, which is nice. Water boatmen now flee at a slower speed and have less health or HP, which again is really good because, you know, when you're first going in, if you don't have the fin flops, you can't swim that fast. It's a pain in the butt butt to catch them, as my daughter says. So fantastic that they are slower. Tadpoles are also now slower, but they haven't got the reduced health. Adjusting a dazzling repost now reduces enemy defense after perfect block instead of reducing enemy attacks. Timing in between creature attacks is now random instead of it always being the same fixed amount of time. Stamina regen is now reduced while you're actively holding block. The blocked damage percentage is now based on the weapon that you're using instead of always being 75%. So my guess for that would be that if you're using the mint mallet, you would get more block damage percentage than you would if you were perhaps using, I don't know, a piece of quartz. <laughs> uh, no, if you're using like the lava blade or something. As far as the interface is concerned, there's now a game option to display the distance over player nameplates to see how far they are. This is in the first menu in the uh, in the options, and it's really cool. It is really cool. It tells you how far away your, your friends are from you in the game. Uh, we've been using it tonight, and it works. And yeah, it's a nice little touch. As far as the world's concerned, new caves to explore in the pond. We already knew that. I mentioned it earlier on. McCoy can now push pond foliage out of its way, which means it will get stuck less. 
because, you know, everyone knows that the koi was just swimming around until he got stuck and then he was no longer a problem for you. Juice droplets now despawn after three days, allowing new ones to drop out of the straws just in case one gets lost somehow. Eelgrass now respawns over time as well. Now, the buildings, we're moving on to the buildings. Some structures such as foundations, scaffolds and walls now align to the ground from their corners instead of from their center. Now, we had a little play with this on stream and I'm not entirely so sure how this works, if it works, and if it's actually useful or if it's just maybe on Xbox. So again, let me know in the comments if you found any difference with building. Personally, I didn't really notice any difference. Some other buildings such as the jerky rack, zipline anchor, and the dew catcher now sit on their legs instead of the center point only, which is useful. You know, if you want to build a dew catcher, but you want to have each leg on, you know, on pillars or something like whatever like that, that should now work. So that's quite nice, it's a bit more realistic. Tweaked the order of some buildings in the radial, so you might, if you knew exactly where something is in the radial, you'll have to find it again. It's probably moved. And the squared roof corner will now block wall crenellations below it. Very, very useful. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, all those, all those grass walls with the crenellations sticking out when you didn't want them to. The recipe for decoy bait has been adjusted, and now here's some bug fixes that we have. These are really cool. So... Grid snapping non-structural buildings on top of existing structures now works correctly. Brilliant. Underground blueprints can now be cancelled either by looking at them or with cancel nearby blueprints in the game preview debug menu. This is so useful. How many people have got blueprints under the ground that they just can't get rid of? Well, guess what? Now you can in the same way that you go into the game preview debug to respawn all of the creatures. You can do the same thing to get rid of all the blueprints. Fantastic. Uh, next, spike strips can now be placed next to each other when snapped to a grid. Buildings can no longer be briefly placed on cancelled buildings, so that's good. Buildings can't be built on stuffed insects, and they also can't be built on other players' unplaced buildings. So if I haven't placed something, you can't build something on top of it. Floating structures will stop bobbing if connected to solid ground. Player can no longer jump while gliding. Hedge berries will now float correctly inside the pond lab. Should you somehow manage to get one there? I've got a feeling that hedge berries are going to be in the pond lab at some point, but that's, you know, a bug fix that they have put. Signs no longer flicker when they are being placed on walls. Sign can now be, signs can now be optionally snapped to the grid. Buoyant markers now float properly on the water's surface. Decoy bait now properly behaves as a lure for both swimming and non-swimming creatures. So you can use decoy bait for, you know, spiders or for tadpoles whatever you want to use it for. Um, diving bell spider chunks are now properly marked as a tier two material. Decoy bait no longer causes non-swimming creatures to float in wacky ways. Uh, they fixed the... <laughs> this, is, this is a long update. They fixed an issue where dying in the depths would place your backpack at the starting spawn ravine. Koi collision better matches its animations to prevent the player from clipping into the model as much. And they fixed random crashes with glass, grass, Plank, storage, and weed log storage buildings. Ominent practical technologies added a redacted recipe. So you'll have to figure out what that one is for yourself. Obviously, that is really cool. That is awesome. Uh, we've finally got some more stuff, which is what we wanted, right? We finally, finally got some more stuff. There is a couple of things I want to cover just here at the end. Firstly, if you're on Xbox, on the Xbox Insider app, be very careful, all right? Don't 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 just go like, oh, brilliant, and just go straight into it. Be prepared. Everybody last time had a bad time, all right? Well, not everybody, but a lot of people had a bad time last time. And I think it's worth just bearing in mind that it might happen again. It probably won't. It seems like they fixed it, but just bear that in mind. Now, one thing that they have said that it does is it does convert your saves into the 0 0.5.0, .0, you know, uh, version of the game so you will not be able to go back if you try you will lose stuff so just be wary on xbox let me know down in the comments how you get on as i say if you think anything does or doesn't make a difference love to hear from you and of course go follow me on twitch if you want to hang out live the link for that is down in the description hope you enjoy my christmas tree which we spent a long time building and uh we've also got a video of us playing christmas tree basketball if you want to go check that out Either way, have a fantastic day, guys. Stay grounded. Take care. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.